welcome to today's video. Today we're going to show you how we made over this entire bedroom set that we found. Uh, one of our customers saw it online and they recommended it to us so we went and picked it up and it was uh, very unique because uh, it's from the 1930s and it's an entire matching set. It's really rare that we get an entire set so we were super happy to find it and we wanted to make it over but still keep some of the integrity of it because it's a very particular style. I started by cleaning with TSP cleaner. If you're going to sand, you can skip this step, um, but I didn't think I was going to. I ended up sanding and I used an orbital sander and the little sanding disc to get into the crevices where the sander couldn't fit in. Um, it's always a good step to clean your piece so that you can get familiar with it and kind of see what you need to work on. What's going on guys? Um... It's kind of an early morning. I wanted to get a jump on this vanity. I just got done shellacking it. I don't know if you can tell, but it's got pretty, it's got a pretty good sheen on it, which is great. You know, that'll, that'll lock in all those odors and stains and whatnot. And I'll be able to uh, paint right over that. And I sanded it beforehand. So it's got a real smooth finish. So there shouldn't be any big defects once we end up painting everything. Again, you know, this is the gun we use. It's Harbor Freight, uh, $16 and we just pour the shellac right in here and then once we get done uh, we fill it up with mineral spirits that's what I got in here at the moment paint thinner actually uh, just kind of run it through clean out any gunk that that may still be left in there and then uh, once that sits for about a half hour I'll take it apart and I'll let it dry and then we'll hopefully be ready to go for the next session but I also wanted to point out that this mask right here let's see if I can find the other one So I see a lot of people doing things with these masks, these uh, paper masks right here. And they're great, uh, but they are only for dust particles. If you're going to be spraying any kind of solution or vapor into the air, these are next to useless because once they get wet, the filtration stops and everything just kind of builds on here and then you're just inhaling those fumes. So if you're going to be spraying something hazardous like shellac or in an enclosed area where, they, where it's just a big mist, you really want to get you uh, one of these masks right here that actually filters the vapors through. And um, another thing that I see a lot of people do, you know, these guys with these really big beards, this, even what I have right now, may be pushing it, but you really need a clean seal all the way around your mouth. I know that looks weird and it's weird to talk about, but this thing really needs to sit flush against your skin or else or else those particles start to go in behind your mask. Uh, and you don't want that, that defeats the whole purpose of this. And you should also change these out pretty regular, I think about once a month or depending on how much you use it, you know. But they get filled up with particles as well and you need to change those out. So again, these are great for sanding and dust and airborne particles, but they are not great for vapors. You need something like this if you're gonna be spraying uh, vapors into the air and hazardous materials and whatnot. Yeah, so the next step for this is we'll let this dry a little more. It's already dry to the touch. So I'll let it dry a little more, bring it inside, and then uh, we'll start working on the bed. Okay, so for the next part, Corey chose to move outside because he needed all the room to spread out and set the bed. Uh, he's working on a well-ventilated area, so that's why you don't see him wearing his respirator there. Uh, for the next part, I wanted to mix a very specific shade of gray, a very soft gray with some warm undertones. Uh, you can do this with any of your paints. If you don't have a color that you want, maybe look around and see what you can mix to make that color. In my case, this were Dixie Belle Fluff, Gravel Road, and Hurricane Gray, and then I ended up adding a brown later on, but I'll tell you guys in a second. Uh, the trick with this, though, is that you want to try it and test it on a scrap piece of wood or on your piece of furniture. You're going to paint over it anyways, but uh, you want to see how it looks when it's dry because there can be a difference there. Don't forget your mask. So after Cora reminded me, I'm gonna go ahead and put my little paper mask on. The reason I'm not wearing the other mask is because spraying this is really quick. I am in a ventilated area and I am using water-based paint, uh, Dixieville, Dixieville in particular, and it has no VOCs. Those are those volatile uh, organic compounds that have a lot of vapor pressure. So this one is all natural and none of those harmful chemicals. So all I need is to protect my face from the little um, spray paint particles that fly around as I'm spraying. The first cut went on really smoothly, super quick actually. 
um, and then I moved on to the second coat and you're about to see here what I was talking about the warmer color in this paint right now you can see how it has a little bit of a blue undertone I wasn't feeling that so I moved to this mix I added some brown and you're about to see how it's a little bit browner warmer and that is exactly the color I was looking for so the next step for a project it's going to be uh, this white waxing effect so I'm not I don't know if you guys can see the top of this dresser from there but I'll zoom you all in in a second the look that I'm going for it's like a lime wax effect uh, so that would be kind of like a whitewash, uh, really aged, but it has that sun bleached kind of look, um, if you will. So that's what I'm going to try to achieve, but rather than blending it by hand and, you know, and taking a long time to do it, I think I can achieve the same result with just whitewash. So that's what I'm going to try today. I'm sure you can do that and you would get more texture if you used a natural bristle brush, but I think this is going to give me just about the same effect that I want and it's going to be a lot less work. So since it's a big set, I want to work efficiently, smarter, not harder, and I think that's what we're going to do with this. I'm going to link a different video where I waxed and gilded a different vanity so that you guys can see the process. I want to keep this one short and not be repetitive so if you're interested in that process just go ahead and click the eye right here on the corner. If you guys see this at all, hey Sterling, it will be uh, when we've already posted the whole set and the end result but it's really late at night and I'm trying to figure out if I like the gold or not. Um, I was gonna originally leave it just plain like this but I felt like some of the details got lost and I wasn't completely satisfied with it so I ended up adding the gold and I feel like it's a modern look. I've seen a lot of inspiration with this soft gray and some gold accents and really clean colors, soft clean colors and so um, that's what we're doing. Don't mind the mess. We have a lot of furniture and boxes inside the house that we're trying to finish and get cut up with some products. But this is what it's looking like. We'll see how it ends up. I'll have a glass of wine and I'll show you guys the finished result. As per usual, here are the photos of the final product. I love how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful or inspirational or encouraging to try something new at home. And if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us for more DIY and home decor projects. See you later.